Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrading.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing well. I uh, hope everybody's happy, healthy, uh, and your lives are going according to your internal plan. So hopefully everybody is doing well. If you are uh, brand new to the channel, guys, thank you very much for number one finding us, stumbling upon us, spending a few minutes uh, with us. Kylie, the only thing I ask is if you can take a second, just hit the like button. It supports the channel. Uh, I appreciate uh, that, and I really appreciate your uh, viewership. So thank you very much uh, for tuning in. So let's talk about the tape. Um, again, above the 50-day bullish, below the 50-day bearish. Again, you saw what happened uh, last month when we lost the 50-day. Really, really disgusting move down, which is obviously really, really good uh, if you planned for it, if you uh, took advantage of it. And once we got back above the 50-day moving average, on May the 3rd, you can see exactly why it is important. So if you are a brand new trader and this is the first time uh, you are tuning into this channel or you've been a loyal uh, viewer for many, many years, just put that right in front of your sticky pad in front of your computer, right? Above the 50-day is super bullish. Risk is on. Below the 50-day moving average, risk is off, and that sell button should be uh, pressed with extreme uh, prejudice. So we've been rallying really, really well. Uh, CPI data came in uh, pretty aggressive. The market liked it. We had we ran to all time highs uh, this week on the CPI number. We got uh, the beta names out of the range. Really, really aggressive moves throughout the week. Last couple of days, we we know a nice little orderly back test back to the five day moving average again. If you're brand new to this channel, you're going to hear me use the word five day support a lot, right? Five-day support is not widely used on Wall Street. I don't even remember how I filed it, but the five-day moving average for me is the shortest-term sentiment and that has control of the short-term buys. And you can see here, every single time on this trend, every single time it hit that orange line, that's what the five-day is, it kept on bouncing and bouncing and bouncing and bouncing and bouncing. And Friday did exactly the same thing. So until we lose the five-day moving average, the trend still continues uh, on the way up. Uh, you know, many stocks exploded this week. Um, the big story going into uh, this week is going to be the last beta name with significance, and that is NVIDIA, right? Uh, we've been seeing throughout the whole month extraordinary amounts of bets, seven-figure bets all along the lines of uh, earnings earnings are on Wednesday after the close. Uh, the stock had a huge move this week. And again, another perfect example of what happens when the stock gets above the 50-day moving average. Here it is, reclaimed the 50-day moving average at 862, and it ran to uh, almost 960, 100 points uh, in three weeks uh, above the 50-day moving average. So again, guys, 50 bullish, below 50 uh, bearish. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see uh, if this thing has a knockout quarter, uh, unlike a lot of stocks, there are no, uh, that there's very little enthusiasm to this quarter. I think people are in euphoric overload. Okay. I don't believe anybody, uh, including myself, uh, I don't believe there's anybody walking around that doesn't think uh, NVIDIA is going to, or NVIDIA. Okay. I don't want to, you know, I don't stress anybody out. NVIDIA, NVIDIA, right? I don't think there's anybody walking around that doesn't think NVIDIA is going to have an incredible quarter. The question is, how is the market going to respond to that quarter? Is the market going to respond via a meta situation, right? Had a huge, huge run and had a good quarter and sold it off? Or is it actually going to have a good quarter like a Google, right? Like a Google uh, and actually go higher. So that's the only question. And the one thing we've been talking about for years about earnings it's an absolute crapshoot. Uh, nobody knows uh, how the stock is going to react off earnings. Again, I've been saying this for years. You can literally, I can literally have the earnings report in my hand, literally have it and still mess up the trade because you just don't know how the market is going to view the earnings. Are they baked in or is there more room uh, to run? So that's going to be a, a very, very big 
uh, big, big market moving event after the close on Wednesday uh, for the week. Again, all you know, all fair and love and war and bull and bear, right? Yeah, S&P rose another one and a half percent. Uh, the Nasdaq gained another two percent, and the Dow uh, that topped the forty thousand dollar mark for the first time uh, is up another one point two percent. Unfortunately, not all is great on the retail side, and this is you know this has been a broken record. This has been a conversation till you're blue in the face, uh, till the end of time, till the next generation comes, and that's the. The, that's the Powerball mentality, okay? And, you know, when there's a big jackpot, uh, if you guys notice, and I'm sure a lot of you guys do, like when there's a big bit jackpot, you know, a billion dollars, what I'll do is I'll log into like the Jackpocket app and I'll throw two bucks in there. I have no idea. I have no idea what the odds are of hitting Powerball, but I know I have zero, 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 zero shot of hitting it. Maybe a point zero 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 one chance of hitting it. So I really don't care. But you know what? I'll throw two bucks behind the idea. The problem is it's the Powerball mentality of the general public. And they'll line up and you see them. They'll line up in your local convenience store, 7-Eleven, whatever it is, uh, Wawa. And there will be a line out the door, a line out the door. And people are spending $50, $100, $200 worth of Powerball tickets out of pure desperation because, again, they don't have the capabilities or the tools, unfortunately, in their day-to-day life to get any type of financial relief. So their only way is through desperation, is through Powerball, and they'll spend so much money on those tickets and probably money that they should be using in their, in their normal bills, but they do it out of desperation. And unfortunately, the psychology of the retail trader is exactly the same thing. It's the Powerball, right? It's the, it's the generational one trade, one ticket that could turn my whole life around. And unfortunately, it's the same thing over and over and over again. Retail, unfortunately, if you go back to the video from what, four nights ago, right? And all I kept on saying is AMC just went from four to 15. You won. You won. You know, AM, you know GameStop just went from 16 to 80. You won. The problem is because of the desperation and the Powerball mentality, retail traders out of desperation, they can't acknowledge they want. They want more. They need more. That's the only way they see themselves getting into that quote unquote financial safe space that they always dreamed about. And unfortunately, it ends exactly the same way. The movie ends exactly the same way. And unfortunately, you saw the same thing this week uh, with GameStop. You know, GameStop just, you know, you have this huge run. Uh, God knows what's going on with this Hello Kitty account. Is that his name? Hello Kitty? I forgot his name. Hello, I, I'm sorry. I'm under the weather. I'm not even be. I'm not even being sarcastic. Um, something Kitty, right? Something Kitty. Um, but you know, we don't know what's going on with those encrypted tweets. Did somebody hack his account? Did they sell his account? But it's quite obvious something's obviously wrong there. And the stock had the big, big run on the tweets, uh, and then they came out with a shelf registration, diluting shares, and the stock went all the way back down to 20. Uh, AMC had this amazing run. It really did. Had this great, great run uh, from $3 to, to 15 I think it was 15 pre-market, uh, right? 15 I think somewhere, 13 pre-market, one of those days. Uh, and now the stock is back to 4 And the latest casualty was this uh, FFIE. FFIE, I mean, talk about not understanding you won. FFIE went from nine cents to four dollars. One, you've hit Powerball 20 times on the same ticket, but yet again, we want more. We want more. We want more. And the stock, you know, is back to a dollar. So unfortunately, uh, as long as you're going to have the retail public uh, trading or investing or chasing or anything, unfortunately, that you want to uh, call it you're going to have the same things. Of course, people made money, 100%, right? If you caught these things early, 100% you made money. The experienced trader probably made more money on the way down. Uh, if it's your thing, if on the backside, move of these things when they exhausted, and um, they lost the previous channel, absolutely, right? I, I think people definitely, definitely made money, but the idea that this is a sustainable way to navigate your trading career is asinine. There's no possible way to do it. And unfortunately, because most traders don't have a process, most traders uh, don't have uh, that edge. They don't have a way of looking at the market. 
that's going to give them a definitive um, definitive advantage over somebody on the other side of the trade. They keep on swinging for the fences, swinging the fences. And yeah, maybe eventually you will hit one. Absolutely. But unfortunately, you know, if you go to Atlantic City, like my daughter right now is at a basketball tournament in Atlantic City with my wife. Unfortunately, if you hit the five cent slot machine for 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 a hundred dollars, it doesn't mean you're a professional gambler, right? And that's unfortunately what this thing is. So look, if if you want a trading career on any any you know on any level, full time, part time, whatever the case may be, you, you got to really take a step back and say, am I doing everything possible to put myself in a position of strength, or am I just literally sitting there? taking shots, hoping to God that whatever I'm in works. It's a very honest question. Um, I think every I think every trader has gone through those series of questions, series of answers in their own head. And the most important part is eventually you have to come to the realization is if I'm not doing everything possible that's going to create an edge for me, well, what am I doing, right? What am I doing? What's my objective? Do I want to be a trader or do I just want to chase the hot stock of the day? If that's if chasing the hot stock of the day is your thing, God bless. God bless. But I, I, again, statistics will tell you. It'll show you over the course of time. It's it's a higher probability that you're going to expire, okay? Your solvency card will be pulled before something mentally uh, will click. So hopefully, uh, again, everybody um, you know finds what they are looking for. Again, look, if you want to try pivots... All it takes is 30 days to come to the webinar. It takes 30 days. There's an alternative way to the normal. Uh, you'll quickly see very, very quickly uh, in the first couple of days of what the difference between chasing channel, you know, chasing trades or trading channels both ways. And the most important part is understanding the nuances of the market. When the market is aggressive, you get very aggressive. When the market is passive, where the channels are contracting. Uh, then you are letting the market do the heavy lifting for you, taking out the machete and slicing the trees so they could create a clear path for you uh, and give you the clearest path to the goal line. So speaking of that, let's kind of start to kind of what we're looking at uh, for this week. And here it is, right? And here's kind of how I look at the market, right? Here's kind of how I look at the market uh, versus somebody who's just trading in the hot stock of the week. When I ask you a question and say, when I ask you Tesla, when I use the word Tesla, what comes to mind? You know, a lot of traders will, you know, turn around and go, Elon Musk, I hate him. I love him. He's the worst. He's the best. He's a fraud. He's the, you know, he's the, you know, he's the Messiah. Gigafactories, right? Gigafactories, self-driving, innovative, piece of shit, blah, blah, blah. Everybody will have an opinion. The way I look at Tesla is, well, where's the channel? Where's the channel that needs to be confirmed? And every single part of technical analysis, every single line, every single level is a story. It's telling you what's happening in that story. So for example, this is a chart on Tesla, right? So it's been in a horrific downtrend for many, many months, especially from January when lost the 50-day moving average, uh, had a horrific decline of 40%, had a horrible quarter. The market embraced that quarter, drove the stock to merely... 200, came in, lost the 50-day moving average, reclaimed the 50-day moving average. And now the way I'm looking at the stock is not gigafactories, uh, Elon Musk, or self-driving vehicles, right? I'm looking at is which channel is going to confirm first. That's it. I love Tesla because I love Tesla the way it trades. I love this. The, the, this is one of the very few stocks, uh, NVIDIA is included in that, um, you know, there's very few stocks that are included in this, in this, in this theme, but there's very few stocks that have the liquidity AMD as well, uh, than liquidity and the average range of Tesla. And all I see is the bottom of the channel, right? I see the bottom of the channel that it's held. And I see the top of the channel that it's now been rejected back to back days. Well, not back to back, but gotten rejected for the last two out of the three days. That's all I see. And all I know is I'm going to be super aggressive if it loses the bottom channel to the way down. And I'm going to be super aggressive to the upside, right? Because you see there's another 5% move, right? If it gets above the top of the channel here, I'm going to be aggressive to the upside. And that's what for, for any professional trader who trades technical analysis looks like. We don't care about 
how wonderful the car is. Like my neighbor has four or five Teslas, including the Cybertruck. I think it's in incredible, the Cybertruck. I, it, it, you know, first I looked at it in the pictures, I was like, oh, this thing is kind of hideous. Until you see it in real life, it's it's phenomenal. It's absolutely phenomenal. Really, really cool looking. Is it for me? Probably not for me, but I, I do respect that it's really, really cool looking, but I don't care about that, right? I, I don't, and, and any professional trader will look at the stock and, and say to yourself, all right, cool. I like the product. I love the product. I have the product, but you know what? I'm going to take advantage of the price action. And going into this week, I know two things are going to happen. That's it. There's only two things are going to happen with Tesla. It's either going to reclaim back the 65-day supply and explode to 188, 189, or it's going to lose the 50-day moving average and go back to 163. That's it. And that's the way you keep yourself out of trouble. Because if you are putting yourself in a situation that you are emotional, you're predicting where the stock is going to go because of facts that you already build up. Giga factories, self-driving cars, Elon Musk, this, that, and the third. You have a bias, okay? A bias is emotion. A emotion is erratic behavior because you're trying to convince yourself, you're trying to convince others that you are right instead of playing the cards that you have instead of the cards that you want. If the stock is going to go higher, it has to reclaim back the 65 day. If the stock is going to go lower, it has to lose the 50 day. That's it. There's nothing more to it. Okay. There's literally nothing more to it. And the, the faster you recognize that technical analysis is there to remove all emotions from your, your thinking, your, your decision making, the higher probability you are going to expire without tapping into your potential because you want to believe you're right. I don't care if I'm right. I'm wrong every day. I have game plans every single day that I come into the market and the market does completely the opposite of what I think is going to happen. And I'm okay with that. And that's the personality you have to adapt. You have to be personally responsible for the price action you have, not the price action you want. Because again, if you just sit there and you go, I love AMC. I think the stock is going to 30, 40, 60, 80. It's a gift. The stock's at $4, right? $4. Are you really betting on the horse that shows movies on a movie theater, right? Is this really your horse? Is this the horse you're betting? I get it. You want to bet on Amazon? I get it. You want to bet on Apple? I get it. Even if you're emotional on those stocks, and sometimes it won't work out for you, but at least the product market has spoken. At least their business model has spoken. But bet on a horse, for God's sake, that has a running chance. So emotions in this business are horrific, okay? Your opinions don't count. My opinions don't count. The only thing that matters is all these lines that I hear a lot of new traders say, hey, damn, these lines are irrelevant. They're so stupid. Maybe for you, right? Maybe for you. But it's pretty important to me. And it's very, very important to understand that these lines, they save lives. They don't cause distraction. They don't, they don't make noise. If you don't understand them, right, you're going to mock them, right? You're going to mock exactly what they are, exactly what they they demonstrate for anybody who's been trading at acts as a trader for the last 14 years and knows the PS60 theory like the back of the hand. We understand the importance of these lines. We understand that they're guidelines. They're in the, we understand that these are the reason we understand where a stock is going to stop, okay, based on supply and demand, not emotion, not guessing. And this is the, the, the reason why we're able to take a step back on days that the market is sitting in channels waiting for these channels to contract, to, to expand. So the most important thing going into this week, guys, again, put yourself in a situation, look at stocks that are expanding out of the ranges, stop chasing the hot stock of the day, and make sure that you are sitting there and trading in a position of strength instead of weakness. Let's talk about quickly uh, the pivots from Friday. Uh, again, here is another example of we don't care which way the stock is going to break, right? Uh, Tesla, 175.80 to the upside. 171.43 to the downside, right? And here was Tesla. Tesla took out the 175, right? Took out the 175.80 and traded right to supply at 79.20s. Again, all it needs to do is reclaim the 65-day moving average and this thing goes higher and all it needs to do is lose the 50-day moving average and this thing's going to go lower. Again, no emotions, no opinions, just facts. Uh, Boeing, 184 rejected three times, needs to build. Uh, nice initial move here on Boeing. This is now the highest close in the whole formation. 
It got back above the 184, stopped just like Tesla did on the 65 supply in the 185s. If they could confirm Friday's channel uh, Monday, this thing does have room. You saw June uh, 200 calls coming in on uh, Boeing. Looks really, really good. Uh, NVAX 15 needs to build, never got there. Uh, Hims, nice breakout on Hims. Really, really nice breakout on Hims. Uh, 415, uh, 1415, 1420 uh, needs to build. Here is Hims, right? Beautiful move on Hims. Close pretty much at the high of the day. Uh, 1460s looks higher. $15 calls uh, were coming in on Hims. Uh, AMD gave a really great bounce. What you saw here, uh, 6840 went to 6970s. That was great. But the balance was awesome from the 6650s all the way to 6970s. Congratulations for you guys who caught it. Uh, NVIDIA never got to the uh, 949 level, but there were some pretty good balance attempts uh, on NVIDIA throughout the day as well. So that's it, guys. Uh, again, I hope everybody uh, is really you know finding slowly what they are looking for. Uh, this is an incredibly tough business, really, really tough. And it's that much harder if you're trading on opinion and emotion. Guys, have a great weekend, everybody. God bless. And with God's help, I'll see you all on Monday. Take care.